Jesus healed many people when he walked the earth and he still heals people today. But if you needed a healing, what would it take for Jesus to heal you? Welcome to Let's Go, where you will hear about lives that have been transformed by the power of God. You'll see and hear real stories of real people going to real places far away, whose lives are changed as God uses them to impact the lives of others for His glory. Get ready to see people experience God's love and power. Let's go. Welcome to Let's Go. I'm Pat McGuffin, your host today, along with Brittany Doss, our co-host, and we have a great show planned for you today. Brittany, tell us about it. Oh my goodness, today we have Matt Buchek. He has been on multiple missions trips. He's led evangelistic crusades in multiple cities, and his testimonies are so much fun. We have a, a time of prayer. We have a time of teaching, a time of encouragement. So hang on and let's go. I'm Matt Buchek. I'm a happily married man of 19 plus years. I'm a firefighter here in the local community and I serve at my local church as a youth leader and many other areas in the church. I have four amazing children and as the father of the household, I have a responsibility to guide my children, to guide my family, to have a relationship with the Lord Jesus. I have a heart for people. I was saved when I was 21 years old and I really wanna see people have the same interaction with Jesus Christ that I did. Um, so I try to get out into my community as much as possible to share the gospel and to really just bring hope and uh, joy and peace, the, the fruits of the spirit to allow people to uh, see Jesus as I was able to see him and as I still do. He is such an amazing, um, aspect of my life and I could not imagine what my life would be like without him. I am at a point right now where I just love serving him. I love walking with him. I am so passionate for him. The only thing I want to do is read the gospel, read the Bible, and really just present Jesus for who he is. I want people to know and remember me that it would not be me, but that it would be Christ living in me. Matthew Buchek, it's good to have you with us today. You're a firefighter, EMT, and yet you go on mission trips. So yes. we're glad to have you with us. Thank you, it's good to be here. Now, Matt, I know we've been on a, quite a few trips together and you've even led a few evangelistic teams, but uh, how do you get the authority to do that as a fireman? I have no authority myself. Um, to be honest, I was 21 years old and I was in the world and I was walking in the kingdom of darkness, little did I know, and the Lord brought me over into the kingdom of light. And I'm telling you what, that changed my whole outlook on life and who I am as a person. And uh, it came to the point to where I realized, you know what, it's not I who has that qualification, but it's Christ who lives in me. That's good. Amen. And um, Matt, at one point, I believe, you took a group of young men from our church to a uh, place far away in South America. Tell That's us about correct. that. Yes, well, uh, we went to Ecuador and um, I went with five other brothers in Christ from our church. Uh, and it was just an amazing experience. Uh, we got down there, I think we were down there for about a week. And while we were uh, down there in the first couple of days, we were able to go to separate churches. We all got to split up and we all had our own translator and we were all able to minister. And it was really awesome seeing my friends, my brothers in Christ be able to minister and go out and you know, really see the calling of the Lord on their life. Uh, I know that I saw a ton of salvations. Um, I remember a number of people that uh, really were touched by the Lord and on top of it, I remember a lot of people coming up and saying, hey, you know, I can't, we can't conceive a child and we were able to pray for them. And you know what, I really feel that one day I'm gonna find out that those people were to be able to conceive because of those prayers. So Matt, these uh, guys that went with you on those crusades, they were all pastors or something like that? Absolutely, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and they were all common people, you know, working in common work environments. Now, Matt, you weren't always a team leader. I remember you know, your first trip, which I think was also Pat's first trip. Yes. Yes. And we went to Ecuador. And uh, what was your impression of that trip, your very first trip? 
That was that was a great trip. Uh, we also went with another person, uh, Ken Stutz, and mm-hmm. uh, he was leading our team. And I remember we were we went to the same church two or three nights in a row. And I remember on the third night, we were like, we wanted to do more. We wanted to be used more by the Lord. And we were like, Lord, what's going on? What what can we do for you? And so I remember the three of us. We didn't go to church that night. We stayed back at the uh, embassy. Well, and I remember being at the embassy. We actually were in the second or third floor, I think. And um, we call this the upper room experience because we decided to pray. And we got on our knees. We cried out to the Lord. We prayed for one another, I remember. And we were just like, Lord, we need you. We want to see your hand on our lives. And I just remember we prayed for a while. And as we're praying, we got a knock on the front door. And there was a pastor that came to the house and invited us to her home church that she has for us to come speak there. And I was like, wow, God, you are good. I mean, right there in the middle of our prayer. I remember that we we heard somebody knock on the door and nobody was downstairs to answer. No, (laughs) but we went and got the door. Yes. And we got the door and she invited us to the home group. And of course we said, absolutely. That very night. That very night. No, well, we went the next night, I think. Okay. Yes. And, but you know, what's funny is I remember that the Lord also opened another door for another church. So both churches were supposed to be the same night. And I still vividly remember the home church that we went to. There was only about 20 people there. And I remember getting to that home group and thinking, okay, Lord, uh, I, let's get through this home group, this, this meeting, so we can go to the next church, thinking that that next church was going to be the big ticket, you know? But you know what? That's putting God in a box because we never made it to the next church. We did never make it to that next church. That was an incredible time. So tell us a little bit about what happened that night. Well, I remember we got there and you and I gave a quick testimony about our life. And then Pastor Tony uh, got into his preaching. And I remember within the first couple of minutes, Tony uh, really felt the need to do an altar call. And I was like, wow, where's this leading? You know, this is a home group. And sure enough, nine or 10 people gave their lives to the Lord. And I was blown away and it was awesome. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. But you know, God wasn't done. Everybody there seemed like they needed some kind of healing. They had some kind of need, some kind of touch. And so I remember it was just like an explosion of prayer, an explosion of the Holy Spirit touching people. Uh, We just started praying for the next two hours probably, and everybody seemed to have been touched by the Lord. There was so many different healings. I remember a lady had a broken foot and it was healed. I remember a lady couldn't raise her hand above her head and that lady got healed. I mean, so much so that at the end of it, I actually had a shoulder problem and I was in a lot of pain. And so we're like, hey, you know what? Let's pray for me. And I'm telling you what, the Lord, the Lord healed me also. It was such an incredible night. That was an incredible evening. I mean, just about everybody in that room that needed healing got healed and, you know, all to God's glory. Um, And between that trip and other trips that you were on subsequently, you saw all kinds of wonderful things that God has done, which kind of leads us to the next question we want to ask you, mm-hmm. which is uh, some years later, uh, you personally were dealing with a cancer diagnosis. Tell yes. us about that. Yes, I was diagnosed with cancer. And, you know, that was a, that was a trying time uh, for me, my family, for everybody around us. Um, during that time, though, I really felt like I was in a bubble. I feel like the Lord gave me such peace such calmness during this big, huge storm in my life. And it it was an incredible experience. Most people look at at a circumstance like this and think, wow, you went through cancer. You know, that's supposed to be really scary and be very fearful. And I was like, yes, it should have been. But I just the hand of the Lord was all over me. And it was such a great experience because of that. Mm. Wow. So even though you were under a potential threat of death, or and worse, uh, ravaging of your body because you went through chemo, didn't you? Yes, I did chemo and radiation. And but the Lord sustained you through that. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, it was like, like I said, I was like I was in a bubble. I just it was like a floating on a cloud. I mean, it's hard to explain because I didn't have fear. I didn't have anxiety. I wasn't worried about it. It was like I just knew that no matter what, the Lord was with me and He was going to get me through every every trial and tribulation. 
You know, Matt, um, I remember all this stuff you were going through, but we have great friends. You have great friends down in South America. Yeah, Miguel. And I believe uh, somebody prayed for you, called up here and prayed for you. That's correct. Um, we have a great friend in Ecuador. His name is Miguel. And I remember him calling and a group of people down there just were praying for me constantly. And he called me up personally and prayed over me. And I really feel like, you know, between him and a lot of people around here, that's why I felt like I was in that bubble of peace because I had such a prayer covering. And, and then after that time of, of prayer from down there and up here, um, time went on half a year, a year, and you finally um, were declared cancer free. That's right, I was, yeah. A great time. Yes. Uh, so did the doctors tell you there was any long-term stuff that could happen from all the chemo? Yes. Uh, my wife and I wanted to have more kids. Uh, we didn't feel like we were done. We didn't feel like the Lord was done with us having kids. And so when we talked to the doctors, the doctors were pretty much like, you have a slim to no chance of having any more children. And that was pretty gut wrenching because we're like, how are we going to handle this? What are we going to do now? There's all kinds of ways of having more children, um, but we wanted to really have children naturally. And so I remember talking to my wife, praying with my wife about it. And I remember telling her, honey, I'm willing to go through whatever measures necessary to, to have more children. But I do believe that the Lord can answer any prayer. And so I said, I think it was probably around July or so. And I, um, I said, honey, let's give the Lord until the end of September for us to get pregnant naturally. And uh, she, she agreed. So it was perfect. So here we are going month after month, nothing happening. Well, we got up to the last week of September and guess what? We found out we were pregnant. Oh, and wow. what an amazing, what an amazing feeling to know that you know, we can't put a time limit on God, but you know what? He answers our prayers. He is faithful. He wants to show his goodness and he wanted us to, to depend on him, but he waited until the last moment before we were going to go, you know, down other avenues. Wow. What faith to be able to, you know, in spite of everything the doctors said, I mean, the first you survived the cancer and then you, you beat the, the prognosis regarding uh, not being able to have kids. Did going on those mission trips and seeing those incredible things that God did, did that have any impact on your faith? Oh, absolutely. I mean, when, when you see the Lord touch somebody's life, it doesn't matter if it's a family member, if it's a neighbor, if it's somebody that lives far away, when you see somebody touched, whether it's through healings, whether it's through a word, a prophetic word, those things just, they, they energize you, they excite you, and it builds your faith. You know, it says building faith upon faith. And all those experiences that I went through in Ecuador were able to build that faith up to a level to where nothing is impossible with God. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that great story, Matt, and, and uh, being able to have another child after that. Uh, uh, not one, we had two more. Two more. Yes. <laughs> Goodness of God, yes. double blessing. Yes. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes, thank you. It was great being here. On our mission trips, we see Jesus heal a lot of people. This shouldn't surprise us because Jesus taught that those who believe in him would place their hands on sick people and they would get well. Yet every time I come home from a mission trip and tell people about a healing I saw, people are amazed. Some of them say things that suggest that they really don't believe it. Like, why does it happen there and not here? Why indeed? To me, the answer for why healings happen so frequently is because that's what Jesus said would happen. Jesus not only said that healings would happen, but he commanded us to make them happen. He said, as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Jesus, of course, wouldn't tell us to do something he wouldn't do himself. Jesus healed the sick a lot and he healed them just about everywhere he went. 10 times in the New Testament, it says that Jesus healed everybody who came to him. Not just a few, but everybody. And after Jesus rose from the grave and ascended into heaven, Peter and the apostles also healed all who came to them on at least one occasion. 
I have noticed that healing provokes more healing. What I mean by that is where one healing happens, others soon follow. I believe this is because seeing a healing right before your eyes makes it easier for you to believe that it can happen to you too. Like our special guest today, who saw so many healings overseas that even a cancer diagnosis didn't cause him to fear. When you or I are dealing with sickness or injury, we need all the faith we can get. One of the reasons Jesus did so many healings and commanded us to do likewise was to build the faith of those who would hear about them. When you see a healing, it builds real faith. The Apostle Paul knew that and said that he would rather have people put their faith in God because of a demonstration of his power than because of wise and persuasive words, even if those words are the gospel message. He said, my message and my preaching were not with wise or persuasive words, but with the demonstration of the Spirit's power, so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Of course, we need to hear the good news preached, but we also need to see demonstration of God's power for our faith to be strong. It's been said that a man with an argument is no match for a man with an experience. Never is this more true than when someone needs a healing. People who have seen or experienced healings are in a much better place to have faith for their own healing than those who have been taught about healing but have no real experience with it. Just about everybody is going to face some kind of battle with sickness or injury before they die. I have seen and grieved over and with too many Christians who have entered that battle unprepared. They may have had faith for their sins to be forgiven and to go to heaven, but they just couldn't muster the faith to believe God for a miracle of healing. When our faith gets tested, many hope that God will heal them. But hope is not faith, and it is faith that moves mountains. Ultimately, the best hope of many becomes medical science, and we thank God for that. But as you know, sometimes medical science just isn't good enough. Your healing and the healing of your loved ones was taken care of by Jesus when he suffered on the cross. As the scripture says, by his wounds we are healed. He hung there and died to give you access, not only to the grace to have your sins forgiven, but to the grace to have your body healed. As Jesus said to the Pharisees, which is easier, to say your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up and walk? The same God who has forgiven your sin wants to heal you. Do you believe this? If you do, Come join me in this declaration. Lord, we believe that your death on the cross means life for us. So we declare and believe that me and everyone else who needs healing is being healed right now in Jesus' name. I'm glad you joined me in that declaration of faith. And I thank God with you for all of the people who just got healed. If you are one of them, because you know that God has just healed your body, please call the number on the screen or go to our website and share your testimony with us. God bless you. And now we're going to continue to pray for your healing with our prayer warriors, Brittany and Sarah. Well, hi there. We're so glad that you joined us for prayer today. I am here again with my friend, Sarah. Sarah, welcome. Hey, Brittany. I know that we had a lot of people call this week for prayer. We've had so many people call in and it has been such an honor to pray with folks for their families, for what's on their heart. Like it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And so let me just say, if you have called us, Thank you for the honor that we've had, uh, that you've given us to pray with you. Uh, and if you haven't called us yet, there's a number at the bottom of the screen. We love standing in faith with other folks that love Jesus like we do. And I'll tell you, God is doing awesome things. The name of Jesus heals, doesn't it, Brittany? Amen. You know, we just heard all these testimonies about healing yeah. today and he is the healer. So he heals and mm -hmm. we want to pray for people for healing. So I know you had a couple people on your heart that called this week. Would you start with them? Yeah, absolutely. So Mariella called and she said her husband is sick. So let's pray. Uh, Lord, we just lift up Mariella in prayer right now. We lift up her husband. Jesus, we know that through your name, there is healing, there is life. And so we just speak the healing power of God over Mariella's husband in the name of Jesus. 
and we just speak hope and life to that situation. And Lord, we pray that the presence of God would be near Mariella and be near her husband right now in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Oh, amen. One of the names that stood out to me from this week is Elias, who mm -hmm. called for healing from Parkinson's disease. So Elias, if you are watching right now, every named disease is under the name of Jesus. I have seen the Lord heal in incredible ways, and we are gonna believe in faith right now for your healing. And listen, I know a lot of you watching are prayer warriors as well, so why don't you pray with us and we'll stand in faith for Elias. In Jesus' name, I just declare that the blood of Jesus speaks a better word than any doctor has spoken over Elias. I pray healing over this disease in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for every listener watching right now, every viewer who just heard us say um, that Parkinson's disease is under the name of Jesus. God, I just declare healing go out in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And I also want to pray for people who have been feeling really depressed, who have been feeling really disturbed. And let's just pray the bubble of peace that Matt was talking about over them because Jesus heals us in our bodies, but also in our hearts and minds. So if that's you, if you heard Matt talking about the bubble of peace and you want that, let's just pray. So Lord, in Jesus name, we lift up every person that is discouraged, that is dealing with anxiety, that is feeling depressed. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, that you give us an oil of joy instead of more. God is giving you comfort. God is giving you peace right now in the name of Jesus. Although you're in the fire, you will not get burned in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. I know a lot of people watching heard the story about those two miracle babies. Oh and I know there are couples that are waiting for that miracle as well. So we want to join you in believing yeah. God for an absolute miracle, that there would be life in the womb of those who have been told there is not life there anymore. Mm -hmm. So in, if that is you, I want you just to put your hand on your stomach. If you're believing God for the miracle of childbearing, I want you just to put your hand on your stomach. And I am praying right now in Jesus name, I speak life to these wombs. I speak right now that the name of Jesus is greater than anything any doctor has ever told you. I speak hope. May hope return to your heart. May peace cover your minds. And Jesus, I just thank you for these precious couples. I bless them in your holy name. I thank you, Father, that you bring unity and peace upon their homes as they wait for their miracle in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Wow. Wow. I'm so excited, Brittany, about what God is going to do in the lives of our viewers. <laughs> Me too. So if you're watching and as you're praying, you felt like God move in your heart or when you see the fruit of these prayers come to pass, give us a call. Reach out to us on social media. Find us on our website. Um, leave us a comment on our YouTube. We will see it. We want to rejoice with you because God answers prayer. Don't you just love the faith that Brittany and Sarah pray with? It makes a difference how we pray, doesn't it? In the past when I prayed, I would only ask God to do something for me if I knew it was His will. Now when I pray, I may not be sure if it's His will or not, but I ask anyway. We don't have because we don't ask. Don't stop asking, don't stop seeking, don't stop knocking on God's door ever. Now, let's listen as my friends talk about our show and encourage you. So, Brittany, we heard so much in that wonderful interview. And I tell you what, there was a lot to be said about this whole faith healing thing that Matt is exposing. Yeah, I love that he didn't allow his season of struggle mm -hmm. to affect his faith in the Lord. You know, he had seen God do mighty things. And what I love about his testimony that I think we can like grab from is that every time he saw God heal somebody, it built what he saw and knew of the character of God. So he saw other people's breakthrough as his invitation, not competition. 
And so he saw there's an invitation here to believe God for more. I've seen him do it before. And if he did it for them, he can do it for me. I agree. You know, it's almost like stacking faith, one thing upon the other, upon the other. It changes your whole attitude and how you view what God is doing. Mm -hmm. So what a great uh, thing that was. Sarah, um, you probably have some thoughts on what you heard there too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think just to echo and add on to Brittany, your point, it's so important too to remember the good things that God does for us and that we see God do because it really does build our faith to think, okay, if God's doing it for this person, then maybe God will come through for me too. And like that stirs us up and helps us to believe that God hears us and that God responds to us. That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. Now, was that the big thing that affected you or was there another point that really jumped at you? Oh my gosh. Well, I loved it when Matt, Matt talked about the bubble of peace. Did you guys catch that piece? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it was so nice because how many times have we been through a hard time in our life and we think we just have to suffer through it. But that's not really what Jesus says. Jesus says, come to me, you who are burdened and heavy laden, and I will give you peace. So if we come to Jesus, we don't have to strive and suffer. Mm -hmm. We can just receive his peace. Mm -hmm. No, you can. I, I felt like God was building his reputation with Matt you know, as he was mm. walking through the different things in Ecuador and then later, um, he was building his reputation of faithfulness. Mm -hmm. What did you think, Brittany? Yeah, I think as you watch God move, it builds your ability to trust him. Mm -hmm. You see him as faithful and worthy of trust. So then when life gets hard, you can go back and recount the goodness of God and his character. And there's a good example in that, and like Matt with his shoulder, right? So on his mission strip, he had the shoulder that was hurt and it mm -hmm. got healed. And then, you know, sometime later he got cancer and he goes, well, God already healed my shoulder. Maybe God can heal me mm -hmm. here too, right? It's this, this step up stacking. on step. Yes. Yeah. And then this idea of being able to have a child when he shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. What did you think about that? Oh my goodness. That was so fun. Just knowing the goodness of God not just one, but two mm -hmm. babies, that double portion from the Lord. You know, the word of God says that he'll do exceedingly more than we could imagine. And this was definitely exceedingly more for them. That's what he did. Thank you so much for those comments. That's great. That's our journey for today. We trust that you have been encouraged to believe that God is love and he wants to bless you and heal you and your loved ones. There is nothing too difficult for God to do, and we encourage you to trust God to do for you everything that Jesus died to give you. Our goal is to build your faith, and we have resources on our website that do exactly that. There you can watch some uplifting teachings or watch an episode of Let's Go that you may have missed, or sign up for our free monthly email newsletter so you can hear more true life testimonies about how God's glory is spreading over the whole world. You can also have the opportunity to partner with us in this ministry of telling the whole world of the great love and power of our God. Thank you for being with us today, and we look forward to seeing you on our next episode of Let's Go.